Well, it's always a delight to have my next guest on Showbiz. Recently seen in Cinderella, then Carols by Candlelight, Sylvia Palladino, a very happy new year to you. And to you, Lee. How are you? I'm doing very, very well. What a busy Excellent. lady you are. I mean, so we saw you on Carols by Candlelight. and What an emotional charged uh, a couple of songs you did. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it was, um, it was a, a wonderful year this year. I mean, it's funny. Every time we do carols, we go, oh, yeah, that was, that was a really good one. But mm. this year felt, felt really good for me. It was lovely to open the show. Yeah. And it was great that um, Channel 9 and carols allowed me to do a different arrangement of O Come All You Faithful because they're, they're quite traditional. Yes. Um, so that was nice. And then to come back and do A Holy Night um, for the first time, I I didn't feel terribly nervous. I mean, I had a bit of energy going, that's for sure. But I felt, I felt like I was able to enjoy it, which was really nice. Well, it came over so well, and the emotion in No Holy Note was, was just beautiful. You had the audience grouped in the palm of your hand. You really did. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. But but that's what you do. I mean, so you can take words and you interpret those so, so, so well. Your phrasing is just brilliant. No matter what you do, it's good. Thank you. I think um, uh, that's the wonderful thing about theatre, and I think that's what it's taught me first and foremost is, you know, allowing the lyric, the emotion to come through mm. the voice. And um, I think when you connect to what you're saying, and for me, you know, it carols, it's, um, I'm a Christian, so I believe the words that I'm saying, and that makes a huge difference to your voice. And I think that people feel that. So um, I'm yes, very the, grateful for yeah, musicals the, to have taught me that as mm, well. Yeah, there's meaning in what you do, and, and of course, yeah. it comes across so, so, so well. And, and of course, um, with that, you're reflecting to Barbara Streisand. You've done a lot of Streisand work over the time, too. Yeah, and, uh, and she's uh, the queen of that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. She's the queen of that. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. How did you love Cinderella? Oh, I enjoyed it so much. It was so much fun. Um, I haven't done a long-running show for quite a few years, so it was lovely to do that. Um, the camaraderie of the theatre is unlike anything else. Uh, that's what you miss, I think, most of all when you're not doing the show, is that feel, that teamwork that you do. You know, you produce something as a group. Mm. Um, and yes, people have different roles in that, but it doesn't come together unless everyone's there. And that feeling of family is is what I miss the most. And so it was, it was just such a joy to to do that. And um, the role was wonderful. I was playing the fairy godmother, so you know she makes all the magic happen. Yes. She was very yeah. well liked yeah. by I the audience. It. So mm. yeah, it was fabulous. And it was yeah. a great theatre. The comedy theatre is a great place to, to stage something like that too. And you know, yeah, it was, yeah, it was, it was just a lovely, lovely time. And written, uh, of course, by John Foreman, and he, he does such a great job. Yeah, he does. He does. Uh, wonderful. And, of course, you work with him at Car- Carols by Candlelight, too. So, yeah, I've worked with John for many years. Yeah, just does, doesn't stop, doesn't. John's a good friend of this radio station, too. And, yeah. you know, we have him on from time to time. And, you know, he's, he's as busy as what you are because you're coming down here to, uh, to Nary Warren, of course, to Bunchal Place very shortly to perform I down am. here. Yeah, the daytime music yeah. theatre. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I always have a great show when I'm down there. Um, so that's happening on the 2nd of February. We've got... Two shows. I'm doing a 10.30 show, which I hear is sold out or mm-hmm. almost sold out. Yep. But then they've added on another show at 1 p.m. And I believe there are tickets still available to that. So um, Just very shows your popularity, good. dear, doesn't it? Just change. I know. It's yeah. good to be, you know, where yeah. people want to see you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly right. Exactly right. Yeah. I don't know how you keep it all going. And, of course, you, you yeah. talk about the camaraderie there. And, of course, you had that back in Les Mis and, and Cats and all sorts of things mm. you've done over the time. When you come to mm. do a, uh, an independent show like this, and it's, it's you on stage, basically, how do you feel? Yes. Uh, pressure. I tell you. <laughs> um, <laughs> But there's a freedom in that too, you know. Um, after so many years of doing it, I I feel very comfortable on stage. I'll try and be as natural and as silly as I am in real life. Um, I try and do that on stage as well. And so I think it's a wonderful thing that the audience not only get to hear you sing, but get to know you as a human being because sometimes people have, you know, this idea of what you might be like because of the songs and the, you know, the material you might sing. And so it's nice that the audience in something like this get to know you. So I talk a lot. I probably talk too much. Um, But I love that. I love for the audience to get to know me. And uh, David Cameron, who plays piano for me and guitar, 
Uh, we've been together, guys, working together for thirty odd years. Have you um, really? Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's so easy with him. Uh, he he can feel my breath. He knows exactly what I'm going to do if I'm going to add a chorus. He's right there with me. He's just extraordinary. So he'll be with me, and um, yeah, I love it. It's really. It's really good fun. You you were saying there about talking to the audience and so on. Mm. I think that's the natural part of what you do because you are natural. Then that comes across to us as an audience, and then we feel that we are entwined into your life, as it were. Yeah, well, that's what I that's what I hope happens. You know, I come from very humble beginnings, Lee. So, you know, immigrant family mm. that came to Australia, and you know, we just got by and. Singing was something that I did because I enjoyed it. It was never to be famous or make money or anything like that. And um, I just so happened to get into this job by accident. And so I I like that um, people see the natural me, the real me. Well, when um, you were you right eighteen when you fell into it, didn't, weren't you? You were very very young. Yeah, I was I was eighteen when I fell into theatre. Yeah, yes. but I left school at fifteen and started working then. Yeah. Okay. So, what was your first job at fifteen then? What were you doing? Uh, I did the Australia Day concert um, in 1987. Yeah. Um, I shared a dressing room with Kylie Minogue. Yep. Um, it was Ricky May. Do you remember yes, Ricky May? Yes, my word I do. Great singer. Yeah, he, yeah. he was on the bill. Um, yeah, it was, I just did um, two songs. One song, I kind of remember. It was, uh, I think I did You're the Voice, John Farnham. Mm-hmm. I was, uh, it was my first professional gig. I'd left school and uh, through winning Young Talent Time, yes. um, that was a springboard into it. And, and I realised maybe I, I can do this as a job. And so that was my first gig. It was televised. You know, in those days we had a lot of television events that they did um, to showcase new performance. And that's, and that's what I did. Hi. You mentioned Young Talent Time. I saw a yeah. clip, I think it was on Channel 10 one stage, of you mm-hmm. performing there. How young were you then? Uh, I was 14 when I first went on the show. 14, I, actually, I lie. I was nine the first time I was a contestant. Right. Um, and I sang Somewhere Over the Rainbow. That's what I've heard. Yep, on, I've heard that. It, yes, it's on YouTube that somewhere. Is, that is. Yep, yep, How right. someone found it, I don't know. But um, <laughs> then I went back on um, as a, when they... Uh, came into talent discoveries, not contestants. Yes. So I did that when I was 14, won the heat, came back for the final and won the final. I was 15 when I did that. You, you mentioned earlier in the interview about humble beginnings and your you folks mm. coming from overseas. Mm. How hard was it for you when you were studying music and, and getting yourself going? Uh, look, for me, I being Italian wasn't a good thing. Um, you know, in those days to be darker, mm. um, t- to be more European-looking was not trendy, you know. I wanted to be as white as I could possibly be. I dyed my hair blonde. I, you know, bleached my eyebrows. I tried to be as less of a European as I could possibly be. Wow. I changed my name. Uh, my birth name is Silvana. <laughs> so Sylvie was born because I was told that Silvana was too Italian. Uh-huh. Um, to be, a, you know, a pop, I wanted to be a pop star in those days, um, a contemporary singer. And so we scratched Silvana, Sylvie was birthed, and we dropped Palladino entirely. So I was like Madonna or Rihanna, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it was just Sylvie. Then when musicals came about, yeah. everyone else had a surname, so Palladino came back in came back and, in. and Sylvie stuck. So, yeah, it was difficult, but... Um, I did it because I loved it, and you can only stick with something that is quite challenging when you love it so much. Wonderful story. Wonderful story. My wife came from overseas too, and right. on a similar story. They, they changed their name too, uh, uh, and they were um, from the Baltics. But uh, right. a very, very similar story to yours. Similar. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of um, performers did. Nowadays, oh, look, to be different is so accepted. And oh, that's it's trendy. Wonderful. Yeah, that's right. We're yeah. all inclusive now, which I think is beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. And you want to you have that, but you also want to have the talent behind that. You know, and so I think it's important that we it's it's a balanced thing. We don't just give jobs to people because they're different. We want to give it because they're different and they're talented. So um, I think it's wonderful that that um, people have opened their eyes and accepting things that are slightly different. 
my friends, go along and see this young lady. She's absolutely sensational, <laughs> and uh, we'd love you to see it. Well, you are young. I'm you compare yourself to me. I'm, I'm, I'm nearly 100. But <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm going to be 53 in August. I, I'm I know, oh, I know. God. Happy birthday oh. for August. I will talk before oh. that, I'm sure. I'm sure. Let's talk before Daytime then. Music Theatre, the voice of Sylvie Palladino, coming down to uh, Narry Warren at Bunjil Place, a beautiful, beautiful theatre. The uh, 10.30 show almost sold out, I'm told. One or two tickets available, but for the one o'clock, one it's open and uh, there are tickets available there too go along and see this lady she's absolutely brilliant and the most delightful lady to have on our program sylvie happy oh, new year you. darling and and enjoy thank enjoy you. your time down at nary warren thank you lee god bless you thank you this january